Uh, welcome to uh, Rooster Talk, uh, latest one here. We're now on our Margaret River series, which uh, really is in, in, in tune to celebrate two years of SAMSO. Uh, I've got um, Ed Turner here for King West Resources. Uh, he's going to be giving us an update on uh, what's been happening. Hi, right, Ed. How's things? Very good, thanks. No, it's good to be back talking with you again. Yeah. Um, well, it's been... Been, been a while. I think it was uh, May last year when we, or May this year, I should say. Uh, feels like last year. Um, so, yeah, what's been happening from your side? Well, the last time we talked, we would have been uh, in the middle of a, a fairly large drilling program at Menzies. Um, so that was, that was quite a successful uh, drilling program, uh, besides getting some extensions to some very high-grade um, deposits there at Menzies. We've uh, done some new exploration drilling and um, increased our resource ounces by, by quite a lot. So basically in the last year, we've almost doubled the size of our resource ounces. That means these, and that's just the near surface uh, resources. So now we're up to 320,000 ounces at 2.1 grams per tonne. So we finished all that drilling about the end of June and we've spent the time in between now just uh, reviewing all the data uh, and planning uh, all the work for the, for the second half of the year. Yeah, you guys must be quite encouraged. I know I've seen some of your results since then that at least you're still picking up those higher, bigger numbers. Great. Obviously, on overall, it, it sort of mellows down to a smaller figure, but uh, it does must give you guys encouragement in terms of um, that you are hitting what you, you are predicting or hoping for. Yeah, we've got a much better handle on the, uh, the structural controls now after doing a lot of um, diamond core drilling you know, in the last 12 months. So, from now on, we can do more cost-effective um, RC drilling. Yeah, because nowadays you can drill RC down to you know three or four hundred meters quite comfortably as well. So we've got those very uh, high-grade targets which we continue to um, uh, drill for extensions to, but at the same time we're um, uh, you know increasing those near-surface resources in, in that top hundred vertical meters from surface, and because that's the sort of leading towards production, basically. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, infill drilling to do now, about 10,000 metres of infill drilling uh, and another 3,000 metres of exploration drilling, brownfields exploration drilling, just in the second half of the year. And that all will lead into uh, scoping studies this year and ultimately uh, feasibility studies next year. So we uh, can rapidly advance these um, projects, basically, um, towards production, you know, given that they're in granted mining leases then and um, on the highway, basically, on the, on the Goldfields Highway. So it's all advancing really, really quite fast, and um, I'm very happy with the progress we're making. I guess in, in terms of the market, I mean, everyone sort of knows that the market's, you know, super hot and lots of activity, corporate activities. Yeah. And you guys are raising money. Um, is, do, do you think it's easier to, to raise money, or is it sort of got complicated because you've got more stories out there and and the, the investors' anticipation of um, returns is not really directly correlated to how exploration or building up a, a solid foundation story is about. So what, what do you, how, how do you think about that? No, right, right now is a great time to be raising money. Um, it, you know, obviously the very, you know, the record high gold prices are making things easier, um, but also, you know, some of our peers having success uh, the investors are seeing some very good returns for uh, for their investment. So right now we're finding it uh, quite easy to uh, raise money. We're in the middle of a rights issue and that's uh, fully underwritten. So that'll bring in about $3.3 million um, in the next few weeks. And, you know, we potentially could have raised more, but uh, we're happy with that because we're also bringing in $2.1 million from a sale of non-core assets. So, after that, we'll have about $6 million in the bank and we'll have enough to do all the, uh, the drilling we plan to do for, for the next um, sort of uh, six to nine months, as well as do scoping studies and feasibility studies. So no, now is a, it's easier to raise money now than it was 12 months ago. We, of course, you never know how long that's going to last, but uh, it's, an, it's an excellent time in the market for, for gold explorers and, and uh, particularly if you've got a pathway towards production, which um, you know, we're very conscious of. I guess when we first spoke, when you guys first started, going back late last year, um, we spoke about the fact that, you know, you're in um, 
you know, a, a mining lease area, your infrastructure's good, you know, you, you're very close to all these other things. It must be uh, good to, f to, 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 to actually tell the story now as, as you built your picture, your resource, and those things you spoke about are closer to truth than, you know, maybe, yeah. uh, you know, it, 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 I think your, your, your story's slowly getting stronger and stronger from time to come, I guess. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've only had the project for 12 months. Um, so we've, we've achieved a lot in that 12 months, but we've basically done what we said we were going to do and we're getting the results that we expected. Um, we still like to find another big uh, new high grade um, deposit, you know, something in like 15 to 20 grams per tonne. Uh, we're working on that. That's a sort of incremental um, uh, process right now. But uh, the more we drill, of course, the more we discover. We've, we've already found a few new loads at, at Menzies. And besides that, we haven't even started our uh, drilling at uh, Goongarri. That, that will kick off in a few weeks time as well. So, you know, our second project, which is 40 kilometres south of uh, Menzies, that's an area, it's actually bigger than Menzies and has even had uh, less uh, exploration uh, completed historically. And that's because about 80% of it's under uh, shallow lake sediment. So we've spent the last six months reviewing all the historic data and the geology and structural controls there as well as well as reprocessing um, various aeromagnetic surveys. And now we've come up with um, some very high quality targets and we'll be kicking off some air core drilling there. So that's more, you know, the grassroots greenfields exploration. Uh, so that's an exciting uh, potential there as well. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, a long strike from um, Aphrodite uh, deposit, which, you know, that's the, the same structure runs into our ground. So we know there's multi-million ounce deposit, a long strike to the south. And that's just one of the uh, the trends which goes into our ground. So we've got lots of good targets um, to uh, to test there. That doesn't take a focus off Menzies, but that's a, a, a secondary um, project which we're we're quite excited about. From from a geological side, uh, technical side, do you, are, are there I guess any surprises or, or you know steady as it goes? You, you're seeing what you you're seeing. Is any any you know? Uh, red herrings coming out from your drilling and your your interpretation? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we've, we've obviously um, developed our understanding and uh, clarified a lot of things with, uh, particularly with the oriented diamond core drilling. We've done a lot of that and the deep drilling. But uh, once once we figured that out, you know, for example, we've we've uh, been able to target uh, a depth extension to the uh, the Princess May shoot, which is part of the Yundaga system. And we've uh, did directional drilling down there and, and hit over an ounce per tonne, um, nearly 700 vertical metres below surface. So that's well underneath the, um, the the historic underground working. So we can predict where these shoots are heading right now. Um, the the thing is you do get to a lot of red herrings because there's so many uh, small mineralised loads often. And so joining those up uh, you know, to figure out if it's part of a larger uh, system. That's a bit of a challenge because sometimes you'll have, you know, five or six of these within the same system. So you basically need to need the uh, the the right density of drilling to get the answers for those. And and we historically there wasn't enough um, deep drilling before we picked up the project, so we didn't have all that evidence. So we're collecting that evidence and uh, and putting all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together. You must have a lot of pieces for that jigsaw because you know that that area is well and truly pummeled over the years. Um, uh, yes or no? Because um, our our corridor that has all the historic production that means it's over sort of ten kilometres long and over a kilometre wide, and so within that there's multiple you know shear zones and uh, you know there's, there's so many different there's thousands of uh, gold occurrences, but um, a lot of them haven't been effectively drilled at all. So there's still large gaps in between there. And then we've, uh, we've uh, picked up an extension of, to the north, another uh, five or six kilometres that leads up to the Lady Irene deposit, which was an isolated tenement previously. Just this week, we've had some uh, another six tenements granted. So there's another uh, five or six kilometres worth of uh, strike went there, which a lot of it's under transport of cover. That hasn't been effectively tested at, at all as well. So we've got all that to um, to look forward to. In terms of, um, I guess one of the things we people are asking is, you know, with with the um, the boom 
and, and, and everyone's doing work, money being raised, holes being drilled. Are you, are you having problems trying to find people? Is, is that going, is slowly becoming, rearing its head up in, in some ways? Yeah. Yeah, it's changed quite um, quickly, actually. Just in the, la uh, the last uh, few months, uh, people and uh, equipment, you know, drill rigs and suddenly become much more uh, uh, difficult to find. Uh, we're, we're fortunate we've got we've got the people in place currently to to uh, proceed, so that won't slow us up. But if we wanted to, do, you know, d double the amount of uh, field work, for example, that would be a problem right now. Getting the, uh, the suitably qualified, you know, good, competent people to do that, and uh, some of the drill rigs already booked up into uh, next year. So we're fortunate so far we've been able to um, tie down some some drillers, but that's uh, getting harder, not easier. Yeah. I guess from from your side, planning is going to be so very critical in the sense that you don't want to leave any gaps because then your rigs goes away and doesn't come back anymore. Um, no, no, you've got to plan it. Yeah, be quite careful with the with the planning. And um, no, we, we're putting a lot of effort into that to make sure we can cover all of the logistical um, issues there. And um, yeah, you don't don't take it for granted that if you let the rig go, it's going to come back in. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I guess it's back back to like in two thousand and seven, where you know it was a mad mad time. I, I think in some ways this is probably worse because you, you can't suddenly bring a whole bunch of geos from overseas as well. Well, that's a lot of the uh, the, the problems. Uh, you know, you can't even bring from interstate. So uh, you know, last year we had a whole influx of graduate geologists from from Europe and even um, you know Brazil and, and places like that. And uh, in the, the drilling companies, they've been restricted by, you know, a lot of their um, people have been traveling from interstate and now suddenly they can't. So that's, that's affected their availability. So they, they might have the rig, but they might not have the drillers. And um, it's the same as the uh, geologists. Yeah. I guess, um, you know, at this point in time, if you know, I'd I like to get um, you guys to have, have a spill, you know, to, to, to sort of the market, like, what what is why would you want to buy your shares or, or hold them and wait for your 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 colleague rail to happen? Well, that five minutes five second statement. Yeah, well, I was just doing some um, calculations yesterday actually, and uh, if you you know our, our average um, valuation per resource ounce is only fifty dollars Australian. And um, you know we think we can keep on building our three hundred and twenty thousand ounce uh, resource base up, up to plus five hundred thousand ounces potentially this year. So a lot of our peers are already rated at close to hundred dollars per resource ounce. So we think there's a lot of upside there, um, and it's just getting that recognition uh, in the market uh, to get to get the new investors in there and, and get them to realise the, the upside. And then that's not uh, factoring in. All of our uh, exploration potential outside of the, uh, the existing resources. Yeah, I think in, it's a, you know it's it's one of those things now. The market's so hot, everything's running. You know, I like to sort of highlight those that have some sort of fundamentals in play, or at least you know well advanced, because it's really hard to. I mean, I had a, 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 a um, um, conference or, or webinar yesterday with the Singapore Mining Club and one of the questions was, you know, what would you tell the members? I guess from, from afar, from the investors, they, they look at this sector and everything's running in what's solid and what's not, you know, that fundamental ish compromise. Because, you know, in our sector, it's, a lot of time it's about um, corporate influence as opposed to technical influence in our, in our sector. Um, and it's, it's, it's good to see like the likes of yourself with some solid stuff to talk about. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're proving up, up what we said we would, uh, we were, we were intending to, uh, to do 12 months ago. So, you know, we're starting to get the runs on the board. We need to keep on doing that. But, uh, one other factor in our favor is, um, as I mentioned, being with our location, being within trucking distance of uh, multiple, uh, processing facilities. That means we don't need to actually reach a critical mass for our resource base, base uh, before we, you know, have to invest in building our own plant. So there's a lot of uh, cost savings there as well as time savings. And being with, in, within granted mining leases means we can, you know, speed up the whole process getting into production. Whereas a lot of companies might have a fantastic uh, resource base, but being a very uh, 
you know, remote area without having that infrastructure uh, support, and then they they need to get to a you know plus one million ounce uh, resource uh, base before they can consider investing in uh, building a processing plant. So you need to consider those sorts of sorts of things as well. Mm. All right, thank you again. Thanks, thanks for giving us the time. Um, it's it's always good to have a chat to find out what you guys are doing. It's it's hard to know the story when you just look at charts, I guess, and and share price movements. Yeah, no, exactly. No, it's been a pleasure. No. All right, thanks, Ed.